On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, Ohio State is back to talk about the NBA playoffs mostly. We spent a lot of time talking about uh, how the, the Cleveland Cavaliers, who played tonight uh, as we are recording this, uh, most of you probably just saw them lose by 1,000. 1,000 is what I'm going to say, right on, right even. I'm going to say 1,000 even. I'm going to say the, the, the Boston Celtics scored 1,046 and the Cavs scored 46. Uh, no, the game game two uh, happened already for, for those of you listening and watching, but um, yeah, we talked about the we talked about the Cavs a little bit. Talked about the the Celtics too. Obviously, spent a lot of time on the the, the Knicks Pacers series, which is turning into the best series. Uh, even though Knicks are up 2-0, um, you know, and and the Nuggets are down, the, the Timberwolves are down 2-0. Very different feelings of what the 2-0s look like. Uh, so, yeah, we, we talked about the, the this this Knicks team's run and 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 some of Rick Carlisle's comments after Game Two and and how fun the Timberwolves are and Anthony Edwards. Just a fun. Uh, NBA playoff discussion, a little bit of uh, a little bit of nonsense sprinkled in as as we are wont to do, but um, for the most part, we talked about the NBA playoffs, which have been a, a very very fun. As of right now, not super. I thought round two would be um, juicier in the sense that that round one, uh, you know, had had more blowouts, I guess, and it, it felt a little more obvious who was going to win each round or, or each each series of round one. It felt like round two was a little more wide open. Um, but so far, I mean, outside of the outside of the Knicks and the the Pacers, uh, and and again, OKC and and uh, Dallas play tonight too. So who knows what happens there? But um, Thunder take care of business pretty pretty convincingly against the Mavericks in Game One. Timberwolves are beating the piss out of the Nuggets right now. Um, Nuggets are having a having a crisis. They're they're in meltdown mode with Jamal Murray throwing shit onto the court. The Pacers have looked good in two games. Probably should have won the first game. Refs kind of dicked them over. Game two, they dicked themselves over. But uh, you know they they've they've been very competitive and been playing well in both games. But also they have a little bit of a defeatist attitude right now with with the with some of their comments and some of their attitudes. So um, I don't know. I, I I expect the Knicks Pacers to, to to get pretty interesting. I do expect Dallas to. Uh, fight back against the Thunder. I don't know about the Nuggets though. The Nuggets, boy, they looked outmatched. They look very outmatched. They, they, they don't have a lot of depth. Um, and and I know it's crazy to say that about the team that just won the title and has uh, Jokic and Murray and and all the other great players. And and I we were just so high on them, but that speaks to how well the Timberwolves are playing right now. So uh, we'll see. I don't know. The playoffs have been a lot of fun. Tate and I had fun talking about them. I hope you have just as much fun listening as we did talking about it. Please enjoy. All right, Tate is here. We're going to talk about the playoffs a little bit, talk about maybe some transfer portal stuff. I don't know. Um, we were just having a great discussion about uh, coming down onto and coming down Little League Baseball. That's a, cl- a steep. Did they, did they, when, when does that stop? What age do you stop? Because I, I stopped playing baseball when I was 12. Mm-hmm. Um, that so still do coming, balls in coming down. Balls in coming down, yeah. dude. A lot of balls in coming down. Uh, and then right around age 12, we, we were still doing it, but I – I can't imagine that MLB players are doing balls in coming down. It, it definitely shortens to two, two, hoo, hoo, which is which is the catcher not being able to. You got to be in charge of putting your balls in on your own <laughs> yeah. when you get older. Yeah. So I'm jealous of the uh, the baseball guys now. They can uh, not now. They've they've always done this, but the the major league players um, when they're warming up, they just toss the ball into the stands when they're done. Yeah. You know? We never. I, that, that was. I was always, <laughs> yeah, if you played like right field and you were on the the third baseline, you'd have to like launch it at the dugout and like mm-hmm. throw a good pitch or a good throw into the dugout. And if you miss, it's like over there, and someone has to run and get it. And what about uh, what about basketball yeah. players throwing the ball into the stands? Has anyone done that? <laughs> did Papev? Do we know his suspension? Did he ever? Uh, did that did that come out? Did they have they I, ever? I believe I saw. Now I assume he's getting suspended or fined or something. He like got no punch. Like Jamal Murray, they acted on immediately, which makes sense because Jamal Murray is in the middle of a series, so you kind of have. To well, that and that was light. I'll say that that's a a quarter of that was a crazy. Game check that was what, crazy. What do you think the going rate is for? So the going rate for throwing the towel and the pad on the court is a hundred grand. What about <sighs> throwing throwing? A I pads? have the answer. Ball into the stands twice. So if this was David Stern, mm-hmm. um, in light of the Artest stuff, which is a long time ago now, but I think David Stern, as while he was commissioner, that was always in his head. It was just like fan player interaction. Uh, if he was the commissioner, he would have got PTSD to to run Artest for sure. Um, so I think I think he would have gone like half a season suspension or some shit. I thought like I really I really I really feel like he would have done that because he would have been like we as a league have to like snuff this out immediately that like fans and players do not 
have like physical yeah you make this too light balls are gonna be flying yeah balls are be things. coming down <laughs> <laughs> balls, are coming, <laughs> balls are coming down um well but adam silver i don't know because like i don't I don't know how much of this stuff is like negotiated by the players' association, and how much of it is. I, th- there are a lot of forces at play, and maybe that's just me getting older. And now I notice more of this. Like whereas when I was younger, and David Stern was commissioner, I used to think he just ruled with an iron fist. Right. Like whatever I say goes, God damn it, and that's the way it's gonna be. And so maybe there's a world now where there's more that goes into it. But uh, I'm gonna take a wild guess that Pat Bev didn't get that bad of a suspension. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's not half a season. Four games. Whoa. Four games. That feels light. That feels pretty light. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, and for, I'm pro Pat. Bev. Yeah, of course, man. Hey, company, yeah. company man. Company man. Yeah. But uh, I would have taken the over on the four and a half games. I would have uh, too. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Okay. I saw the I saw the Pacers or uh, or the Indianapolis Police are like investigating. Yeah. I don't know what the investigation is. Like, did you saw it? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, they're just like rewatching the clip. They're like, yeah, it looks like he he looks like he threw a ball into the. Face. And I am I obviously cool. Let the dude play. Sounds good, but. That seems light to the fact where does that set a precedent that like ball in stands at yeah. fan is four games. One of Big Cat's ideas that I've always loved is that every NBA player should be able to fight one fan uh, oh, wow. just once a season. You get one fight per season. One per season. So yeah, you and I use think, it or lose it. I think the this idea was born out of uh, basically Russell Westbrook gets in a fight with a fan mm-hmm. every single time he takes a court. He's yelling at somebody, trying to get somebody tossed. Um, so I think that's where he got the idea from, uh, which makes sense because you watch Russell Westbrook and he like he. Every time a fan calls him Westbrook, he loses his He's mind. He yells at And there are instances where I think you, you sympathize with the players, but then there are other times where, in like the case of Russell Westbrook, it's like, God damn, this is every single time, every game you're playing, it seems like you want to fight somebody. Um, so his idea is like you get one fight. Like if you, if if it means that much to you, you know what? You know what? Why not tonight? Yeah. You go punch him in the face. I like because <laughs> it, I mean it's a two way street, so it would shut up Russell Westbrook every time it happens because you only get to use you only it get once. Once, but someone's gonna bark up the wrong tree one time yeah. and get their ass whooped by Russell Westbrook. Right, right. It's a fine line. And it also, you know, maybe maybe you choose your fight. You're like, this is going to be my fight. I'm going to go into the stands to fight. And then all of a sudden, one of the Jokic brothers stands up. And you're like, shit, miscalculated Str- that one. Strategic. <laughs> how, do, how do you want to use your car? I heard someone call me a bitch. Uh, I turned. <laughs> I pushed the fight button. And uh, I don't know if I want to do That was an accident. Anymore. That was Button I slipped. Wanna, I wanna, Finger okay. slipped. Uh, no, four games seems pretty light, man. But yeah. uh, good good on Pat Bev, I guess. I feel um, like you use that if you, you don't want to go on a West Coast road trip. Like, throw a ball in the stands. Yeah, just miss re- the re- recoup a little bit. <laughs> Rest up. The shit like the 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 punishment varies. It's like like one trip to Houston or Atlanta is worth four trips to like yeah. to Oklahoma. Going to City Miami. Or, yeah. It's like, like yeah. Yeah, you, Miami is worth like that that's like that that's a, that's like a five game suspension for any <laughs> other you can, all right, Pat Bev, we'll sit you down. Now you can do four games of, of Oklahoma of, City, Utah, Utah Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland, Detroit. Yeah. Or you have to miss the Miami. Or you trip. miss one trip to Miami. I'll miss four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right, NBA playoffs are going on. We're recording this uh Thursday. It's about three PM um mm-hmm. Central, so I, I'm just time stamping it to say uh we got a couple games tonight. Your beloved Cleveland Cavaliers are going to get their asses no, absolutely well, beat with the by the new Celtics breaking tonight. news. With What's the, the new, breaking news? Well, word just came out that Evan Mobley has a sprained ankle. Oh, and I think so, that might that might finally be the <laughs> straw that breaks the camel's back and say the Celtics might win this. The series. Celtics might yeah have a have a leg up now. Um, wounded Evan Mobley. Thunder Thunder Mavs is also tonight. Uh, both both of those are game two. We're at. Uh, and then, meanwhile, tomorrow is is obviously Knicks, Pacers, and, and Nuggets, Timberwolves, who are are both two zero. Uh, but yeah, so so that's where we're at. We we have games tonight. The Cavs. So the Cavs, Celtics, um, does not feel interesting to me at all. You're a Cavs fan. Mm-hmm. Um, sell me on why I should give a shit. Why why a neutral party should give a shit because uh, the Celtics are very good. The Cavs seem not as not only not as good, but then like every time I googled like Cleveland Cavaliers basketball and hit enter, there's a an an article saying Donovan Mitchell wants out and, mm-hmm. and this is his last run maybe mm-hmm. with the Cavs, uh, which is never a good sign. Like if that's the stories that are being put out. While you're in the playoffs, right? Um, they have no shot, right? No, they, they have no shot. They don't. But if you want me to sell you on it, it is welcome to Cleveland Cavaliers to national television with this series. Oh yeah, yeah, which is huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used I was having to figure out how to get NBA TV every night. Yeah. for the Magic series. Um, no, I, I'm disappointed in uh, in my city of Cleveland because 
if it's time to chirp, I'm in. Like I'll yeah. talk shit about Ohio State. I'll talk shit, you know, if I think the Browns are good, the Guardians, whatever. The fact that the the Cleveland fans ended that game seven against the Magic yeah. chanting, we want Boston. Yeah. Um, breaking news. We do not want Boston. <laughs> we don't want we don't want Boston if Jared Allen was healthy. I think a healthy a healthy Cavs team uh probably stretches it to five <laughs> games. Yeah, yeah. Uh without Jared Allen, we are we got we're doing the same we're doing the same thing that we did in the Magic series, which is pass the ball to Donovan Mitchell, see how much a one legged Donovan Mitchell can yeah, do. He can be, yeah. And he was and it was good enough to beat a hand selected Magic series in seven games. Yeah. Um, he's good enough to get swept against the Celtics. Yeah, I don't I don't wanna I, I know Donovan Mitchell is not hundred percent and this Cavs team is not no one looked at them and said they're a, a title contender or anything, but um so it's it's less about like this postseason run and more his entire career. Where where does Donovan Mitchell stack stack up? Where is he? Because um, the Jazz teams were really good. He he's had some just insane playoff performances. Uh, I mean, but then also, like he is kind of a guy who honestly I forget about. Like I, I if you were to ask me to just start naming NBA stars, like if I, I said don't know. top fifteen or yeah. Your name. Yeah, and I think he, I think he might actually belong in there, but like I just forget about him, and I don't. It's not even because he's playing at Cleveland, because like I, I, I don't mind checking in on the Cavs. There was another guy, but there's just yeah, yeah. There are guys that have played at Cleveland that could play. Um, I just, I, I find him to be like an interesting. He, he seems to me to be like the, the superstar cutoff, where it's like if you're trying to argue that a guy is a superstar, which is somehow a conversation that happens with NBA players every so often. It's like, is he a star Mm -hmm. or is he a superstar? Yeah, Um, big qualifier. I feel like Donovan, if you're worse than Donovan Mitchell, you're definitively not Not a superstar. superstar. Um, But if you're better, you have a case. The big discussion after the – so Game 7 against the Magic was the biggest comeback in NBA Game 7 history. Donovan Mitchell went out. He had 50 in the Game 6, then he had – you know, 39 in Game 7, and the big talk on Sports Talk Radio the next day in Cleveland was where does Donovan Mitchell rank in all-time Cavs players? Wow. And they had wow. him at two. What? The consensus was two. I think that's the most – let's be clear. That's got, shocking, but – Bounced in the first round last year. Yeah. And then this year we beat the Magic, and now we're going to get swept. I, there's a guy – so one's one's obvious, right? Mark Price. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, was gonna say, so I, was gonna, I was trying to think of the same. <laughs> so Drunas Ilgowskis yeah, won. Yeah, but no, so LeBron's obviously won. Obviously, Booby Gibson, yeah. But can we not say that – like, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the guy, but do you remember the guy, his name's Kyrie Irving, um, was like a multiple He's All-Star. probably up there, I would say, he yeah. three to yeah. win the championship. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. To, Donovan Mitchell is not too. No, and, and too. I'm telling you, that was the talk of the town. Brad Doherty in the mix yes, somewhere. Mark Price. Mark Price. Um, and it, it says a lot about the the franchise that we're debating it. But well, I thought for a second you were going to say that it's it's less about like your stint as a Cavalier, more about like the best players to ever put okay. on a Cavs jersey. But then even then, you're introducing Shaq into the argument. You're introducing D Wade. D Wade. <laughs> you're talking Dean Wade or Dwayne? Yeah, yeah, both. Both, maybe. both are up there. <laughs> uh, uh, so no matter how you're framing this, I don't yeah, think Donald Mitchell is too. But um, is he leaving? Is that so? I that think vibe? I think that uh, if this is our ceiling, like if this is what we can do, and he's leaving when he when it's time to leave, do you trade him this off season and get what you can for him? Yeah. Or do you try and get back to the conference semis next year? Yeah, that's always the hard part with uh, small markets. That's always like it's always like the um, when you know, because like if you're the Lakers, you know you, you're, you're you're trying to win a championship every year, even if you don't have a team that's good enough for it. You you have that's to you, you have, have to, to you have to just keep going all in, all in, all in. Um, but yeah, like a, a, a franchise like the Cavs and the, who's won a championship, but are like the Pacers, you know, it's like like the Pacers. That's been a frustration for my entire life. Is is the Pacers are always. They never wanted to tank ever. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was like a point so of pride in, in, in Indiana. It's like we're always going to give it our all. And I'm like, they, look around at like who's in. The, there's Michael Jordan in the league. There's, <laughs> you know, like we have Re- Reggie Miller's the best player. He's a you know a decent player, but like he's not fucking Michael Jordan. Right. And then like the next era is like Shaq and Kobe are dominating the Pacers. And like the Pacers are never good enough to actually win a title. But at the same time, there's like a sense of pride, which I I respect to some degree. That like we're 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 going to give this our our all, but then you you sort of start looking at it and you're like we're winning 
44 games every right. year just to lose in the first or second round? Like, what is the long-term vision? I don't know. If your ceiling's not a championship, if I'm running the franchise, it's rebuild. It's, it's, it's rebuild, yeah. Thing, it, you so. feel like that should be what you do, but it's like a hard sell because that the, the reason small markets don't want to do that is because, you know, I don't know if it would happen in Cleveland. I don't know if it would happen in Indy. I'm just using those as examples. Apathy could set in. You could become like the Charlotte Hornets where you're mm -hmm. throwing bullshit out there and you're like hoping that maybe we'll get some draft picks, but like people in Charlotte don't give a fuck about the Hornets anymore. Yeah. And like you start you start putting out too much bullshit in a, a smaller market, they're just like, I don't all right, I'm I'm done with you guys. Well the the big thing with the Cavs was the the plan was that if you bring in Mitchell, that is the piece that will take it. Because because we yeah. had so Darius Garland, we signed him to fucking we paying him I think forty million dollars. Yeah. And but the problem is he's a ball in the hand guy. Yeah. And Mitchell's a ball in the hand guy. Yeah. So now we've gotten everyone's bitching about Darius Garland. Oh, where's Darius Garland in the playoffs? I agree, he's not playing well at all, but also we're asking a ball in the hand guy to play yeah. less with ball in hand. And then Evan Mobley, we were hoping was going to be like a top fifteen player in the league. It's like, okay, you got Mobley, you got Mitchell, you got Garland. Wait, we have a big three for a championship. Yeah. And we just don't. And you have like a you don't have a big three, you have a large three. Like a or like a just above a, a average medium size. size, like a slightly above medium, a marge. It's yeah, like in between a, a medium and a large. <laughs> it's, yeah. like a, it's like a pretty good three. Yeah. Like a pretty good, they're pretty good players. Yeah. But I don't fear them if I'm the no. rest of the league, obviously. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the point about Garland. This is something that, that I want to, um, this is like a broader topic, but mm -hmm. we have a reason to bring it up now because this is something I believe in. I want your thoughts on this. I have one, one of my NBA takes is that. I believe I don't know what the percentage is. I'm gonna say ninety percent just to as a I'm gonna I'm gonna start there. I believe that ninety percent of guards in the NBA could average twenty to twenty five points a game. If they if if that's what the I'm not saying offense. unlimited shots, but it's like if, if, <laughs> if you took a guard, literally any guard in the NBA and you're like, You are our guy. We want you to play like the franchise is built around you. That doesn't mean I want you shooting fifty shots a game. I don't mm -hmm. want you. Sh it's not like we're 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 a clown show out here where it's just shoot it every time you touch it. It's like you, we want to run the offense through you. You are a franchise player. Go lead us. I believe that the talent in the NBA, every guard in the NBA, could average twenty to twenty five points. Uh, I, I I just believe that they're that talented, and I feel like I don't I don't get a ton of pushback when I say that, but I, I think that. Um, I, I, that's my way of saying that that pe I don't think people fully understand how much roles matter in in certain contexts and how much I mean Jalen Brunson is the guy that like immediately comes to mind with this. So Jalen Brunson is teammates with Luca. Um, he wasn't the Jalen Brunson he is on the Knicks, and now like it, it, uh, and a lot of the, there's there's like a revelation. It's like how did Jalen Brunson get so good? And I'm not here to say that I saw this coming from Jalen Brunson. Mm -hmm. I did not. I'm just using it as an illustration that like w you take a guy like that who when he was on the Mavs, the Mavs didn't think he was worth keeping or like right. they they. You know, they weren't like, we want to build around you. We're, but then you watch the Knicks offense, and yeah. it's like... And when the Knicks say, Jalen, go take the ball, he's like, watch how good I yep. am. Um, and I think that, that Garland, I don't I don't necessarily think that the franchise just should do that. I think mm -hmm. the the reason... I'll put a bow tie on my point here. Like, I, that's I'm not saying that every guard should should take that approach uh, or that like a, that if you're if you're the Charlotte Hornets you should take Darius Garland and build your entire team around him because um, that's the the reason guys don't average twenty is because as it turns out there are probably a better player on the team that we should run, be running through there's probably there are a lot of reasons not to do it um, but I I, th I think the fit matters and I think like having guys a guy like Garland who as you said is a ball in hand type guy um I don't think that means that Garland is not good I just think like I think that shit matters a lot and it wouldn't surprise me if like Garland somehow like Donovan Mitchell leaves Garland yeah. blows up no that's what's gonna or, happen is, yeah. is is you're, you're right I believe you that the if if you are being asked to score yeah newsflash dudes in the NBA are good at basketball they're really fucking good so you can go to a situation where it's like you're the guy who's gonna have the ball and your guy's gonna have to score you're gonna score you're yeah. in the NBA for a reason but then you look at like the teams that win it's like hey the best chemistry in the leagues for the Nuggets right there and there's no surprise why they won the championship last year yeah. they don't necessarily have a, an offense where it's like watch this person dribble around and score yeah so yeah I'm with you if Darius Garland I mean Cleveland hates him right now because like he, what are we paying this guy for? Yeah, but that's well, what I'm that's saying. It's, 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 it's if it doesn't fit right, like that doesn't mean he's a bad player. That doesn't mean they should keep. I don't. I don't really have a conclusion to the point. Uh -huh. <laughs> like I don't really have like a this, 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 and therefore you should do this. It's just sort of like I, I, I like reminding people every so often what you said. NBA players are really fucking good, and sometimes. Um, 
yeah, there are guys that are in bad fits. There are guys that, that are coming off the bench that are asked to – I mean, I'm thinking of like like TJ McConnell is another example that uh, he's he's on the Pacers uh, bench last night for the last seven minutes. Crazy. So the, he, he, you know, the, the, the broadcast is losing their mind. I think everybody on Twitter is losing their mind. They're like, nobody on the Pacers can stop the Knicks. The, the Pacers defense is atrocious. Mm-hmm. Why not just try and see? Like, we, we've already seen it throughout the game. We saw what TJ McConnell – Do you see his plus minuses yeah. so far? Oh, insane. Like, um, but I, I think – and then, and then the I, I think the explanation, if you're the Pacers, you're Rick Car- Carlisle, you'd say, well, we don't want to sacrifice offense. Um, and I think you sort of get, like, a perception of TJ McConnell's like, oh, yeah, he's a liability on offense. And maybe he, – listen, he's not as good as, as Halliburton on offense. He's not as good as Nimhart. I'm not saying he is. But I do think that, like, if, if you – if if everybody on the Pacers got hurt and there was a circumstance where you're like, all right, TJ McConnell, you got to go out in this regular season game in February and, and get us cool. some buckets. Yeah. TJ McConnell would just be like, all right, well, here's 35. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And everyone would be like, where did this come from? And it'd be like, well, the guy's really fucking good. It's just that when he's on the team, he doesn't do that. Um, I don't know. That's No, I hear I don't, you. I don't know what my conclusion is. I just – I don't know. You got me – Guys got are me, good. You got me thinking. I'm guys a little worked good. up about the Pacers last night, to be honest. I don't I don't necessarily understand what the game – their defense stinks in general. It's so – it was that was frustrating. But their, night, yeah. their, de- their effort stinks. Their positioning stinks. I think their strategy stinks. Stinks. Yeah. And it's like, hey, why not? And I'm not even saying you have to try McConnell to see if it works because it did work. It did work. It like it's, the, it's been the, working. Like it shows the evidence shows. What's the plus? I want to read the, the actual numbers. Do you have them? It was like he was, was like plus, plus 19 when he's on the court, minus, minus 21 when he's off, or so, something like that. I I had it too. It is plus. I'm scrolling through my text. I sent it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus. Oh God damn. I sent it to mostly sports. Now I can't find it. Uh, plus nineteen on the court, minus thirty-two. On yeah, the minus thirty-two in two and games. And Rick Carlisle says, "Hey, it's crunch time, McConnell. Get a yeah. towel. Yeah, and just stand there yeah. and it, 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 and watch Jalen Brunson. And it, it, and that's not to say that if you put T.J. McConnell out there, Jalen Brunson was not going to score the final right. seven minutes. He was going to score. It's it's just. But doesn't he frustrate him better? Frustrate him? Yeah, make it hard on him. Make it make it so at least. I, I do think this that that if I was if I was coaching the Pacers and I throw McConnell out there and you tell McConnell like you, you you're you're the Jalen Brunson guy. I mm-hmm. want you you're out yeah. there for one reason it's to stop stop Jalen Brunson the last seven minutes. He's not going to succeed every possession. But I would live with the results if I told the other guys, okay, so he's gonna he's going to guard Jalen Brunson. Uh-huh. We're gonna live with the one on one stuff. If Jalen Brunson scores every time down the floor, at a certain point you shrug your shoulders and you're like, God damn, he's good. He's really good, yeah. Um what we're not going to do is is send a double that's like a half ass double the second he crosses half court and by doing so give Dante DiVincenzo wide open threes. Bad shooter though. <laughs> yeah, Let's dude. leave DiVincenzo. He's got what five threes and however many straight. It, games. it feels like the Pacers were like, okay, we're gonna try to play Brunson straight up with like Halliburton. Oh mm-hmm. uh, shit, he can't guard him. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so we'll try doubling, but we'll kind of give it a half ass to the half ass oh, shit, that, team. Shit, that didn't work. Uh, fuck, I guess we're out of ideas. Stay there, McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare get up. Um, so frustrating, and I do understand that. Like, you know, if you if you're putting McConnell in, you're now sacrificing someone else. Are you taking Nimhart out? Are you taking Are you taking uh, uh, Halliburton out? If if you're not taking either one of those guys out, are you running a small ball lineup with three guards? In which case, like the Knicks are killing you on the offensive glass, and now that might, they might kill you more. I understand why you might not do all of that. What I don't understand is we're watching it not work over and over right. and over. Try and over. something. Just try it. Yeah. Just try. It. I'm not telling you you have to commit to seven mm-hmm. the, the final seven minutes yeah. of McConnell out there. Just throw him out there for a couple minutes, see what happens. Just see. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the way Carlisle's coached uh, defensively the first two games, but I will say I loved. I loved the post game last night. People are grilling him for it. I loved it. No, I, 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 I'm with you. Like, I don't know if all of his points are. Um, they don't have to be. Uh, yeah, but they that's don't the thing. Have to it's be. like I don't know if they're fully coherent. I don't know if there's sound reasoning behind them. But as a coach, I love that that he's doing it. It's like the it's like the high school coach that like gets a technical to fire the team mm-hmm. up. Like he used his post game press conference to let the entire world know that the Indiana Pacers are getting jobbed by the big city Knicks and the NBA wants them to win this. And I guess what? They're coming home to Indiana and those boys are going to be fired up. First call from the refs. Boom! Not just the boys, dude. The Hoosiers. The the, the Pacers fans. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that crowd is going to be. The crowd's just like. New York. (laughs) Yep. And and it's going to be be in the refs' ear too, is it not? Yeah. No, I I thought it was was genius. And also – 
at the end of the game, he did what you said. He got he got tossed. He did the strategic toss. He did the Norman Dale kind of. Like yeah. he, he knew. I think he did look up the scoreboard. He's like, all right, there is less than a minute. We're down. Oh yeah, we are. We're not yeah, gonna, gonna win. We're not gonna win. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was and within he, his right. Did they? They went with the, the inadvertent whistle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. I know. I'm fine with the hey, I fucked up. That I wasn't fucked, a double yeah. dribble, but the <laughs> and it, the, 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 that was and then a very an inadvertent, inadvertent signal too. I love very it. yeah inadvertent as signal. my hands yeah, went yeah. like this. I don't know what happened. Something I don't know what came to do over with my hands. Uh, I didn't feel like game two was the refs. Game one no. obviously was, and I think there was frustration boiling over from that. And then he was just frustrated with his own team and game two. And um, no, I love it. I love I love Knicks Pacers because it is. Uh, it was Hicks versus Knicks in the '90s, and and that was like a massive thing when they met every year. And I, you know, Reggie Miller mm-hmm. last night told us all about it a thousand different times at the uh, expense of actually talking about the game. Um, and then they let <laughs> him know too. And then and they, they let him let know. Him know. That, that, the fuck, that's fun. This is the most fun series, no? But this is what it, it, there is like a real in a league that I don't want to say doesn't have rivalries anymore. But if you were an NBA hater, you might argue that like the players all like each other yeah. too much. There's too much player movement for rivalries. And I'm not here to say that the that this iteration of the Knicks and this iteration of the Pacers have like a long history with each other. Or whatever. I do think that the franchises and the fan bases the cities, do. Yeah. The cities do. They're just polar opposites. They 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 represent polar opposite things. Every you go to Indiana and you just find a random Hoosier and you talk to them. Tell me your, what are your thoughts on New York City? Oh, that fucking play the hellhole, dude. Too much traffic. Fucking traffic <laughs> and the fucking oh my god, I wouldn't. Li- no green grass. I wouldn't live there for free. <laughs> wouldn't live there for free. But you then you get- ask, you ask New Yorkers, Indiana. where's where's the last place you'd want to go yeah. on vacation? Oh my god, Indiana? Indiana? Are you kidding me? And I I think that makes it like real. There's like real animosity I, from I the agree. fan bases and all that, and it uh. And and that was how it was in the nineties when they when they did meet every year and there really was like a real sense of rivalry and, and seeing seeing it playing out now and, and Rick Carlisle leaning into that aspect and being like, We're just a small market team and the league doesn't respect us like they respect these big city boys. Which I don't I don't fully, I got, I got, I don't fully disagree with them. I don't think that like that's why you're losing the games, right. but like at yeah, the lead. Of yeah. course there's a sense of that. Like I of course of like of course, if there's like a if there's a massive free agent, if uh, I don't know, name a, if when Victor Wimbenyama is when his contract's up and he's an unrestricted free agent, and the NBA media is going to make lists of possible destinations for Victor Wimbenyama, take a stab at some of the places they're going to toss out that he mm. should go to. I'm gonna guess it's not Indianapolis yeah. and Detroit. Cleveland and Detroit. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Miami's gonna be on the list. I'm gonna guess the Lakers will be on the list. They'll probably throw one of the New York teams on the list. Boston got, will be on the list. I gotta throw this in there. So I was blogging Cavs the other day, and I was looking at the odds for the Cavs to win the series against the Celtics, mm-hmm. and it's the same odds that LeBron James. James goes to the Detroit Pistons next year. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you all that said that we want Boston, can you see LeBron choosing Detroit as yeah. the next team no. he suits up in? So no, no, I got I got I got bad news for Carlisle though. In uh he can fire up the crowd all he wants and he can fire up I do think they're gonna get a better whistle because of what he yeah. did. Um defense travels. Defense defense yeah. travels. It's it's coming right back with it's you tough. guys. And I, I will say this the to, to undermine <laughs> Carlisle's argument, which again I'm not I'm not taking Carlisle's press conference as like this is a representation of his basketball intellect. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's a coach. Yeah, he's, he's pressing trying, buttons. He's, put, he's trying yep. to to manipulate what's going on here. Um, but the if we were to for for this charade, we will do that. The the argument that the the Knicks physicality is awarded, rewarded, uh, and the Pacers was punished. Um, you know this that that's. He's not wrong, but also like that's how basketball that works. Ball? That's yeah. how ball works. If you aggressive. are the aggressive yep. team, you get the advantage. You get you set the terms. You you, the, and, and the refs recognize. Can't, that. Yep, yeah. can't call it every time. I mean, yeah. that's how you, that's how you press. You get up in them. You force them to put the ball in. The every back. coach knows this. Yeah, yeah. It almost and he knows sound, this. So, yeah, he knows that. He knows that. It makes the pacer sound soft, but a little bit. And I think they might be. I think they might be, but that's okay. They're what fun. A, I, they are fun to watch. But what about their uh, opponent? The Knicks, how you feeling? They're about so them? fun. They're awesome, but is it going to catch up to? They're them? so fun. It, at some point, you think that the they they are getting banged up, which everybody gets hurt at some point, and it's like injury luck is is how you, everybody has to navigate injury luck, and you never know when it's going to come for you. Yada yada yada. But with the Knicks, it feels a little different because it's like you do play the same guys a million mm-hmm. minutes, forty eight minutes. Last yeah, night, so. so like 
Ananobi having getting a little banged up, and and Brunson's always got something going on, which like he, he he's not missing. You know, he missed stretches last night, but he's got like that. He's got the one hand taped up. He's holding his dick at one point. His foot's hurting. Um, and you know, in a vacuum, you would say, "Damn, bad injury luck." Not in a vacuum, you're like, but also, I mean, you're kind of running these guys into the ground. I saw Hart's averaging over 48 minutes a game right yeah. now. Yeah, last five because they went in overtime. So, and you think at some point this is going to catch up to them and like playing guys this many minutes is going to, to backfire, and especially in a series against the Pacers who play fast, mm-hmm. who have a deep bench. Uh, you know, you would think that this is going to hurt them, but also it's like it hasn't yet. So and like, I, when, are, when is that going to – when is that going to – I don't think up? the players care. Like, no. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I hate to be like old man yelling at clouds here, but like, dude, when you played AAU basketball, did you not play like five, six, seven games? Dude, like we played so – I mean, it's it, – like now, it was a little. Games it was a, a little. It was now. I would say the competition a little different than the NBA, but sure. the argument back the other way. Um, we were also eating like fucking walking tacos. <laughs> yes, in between games, McDonald's <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> like, like, but you were you were begging to play. You get you would get pissed if you get taken out again. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I get that it's you know different level and everything, but. I don't think Josh Hart cares that I, the mindset. Yeah, the the mindset is is the same though. It's like if you're a ball player, you're a ball player. A ball you just player. want to play. And 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 I will say though, like the Knicks don't. The Knicks only appear tired when it's convenient to make the argument that they're playing too many minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when when if you see a guy airball a shot, then you're like, aha, there it is. It's his legs. legs. <laughs> But really, over over the course of like the the ends of these games, it's not like they're running out of gas in the sense that, that like it, everybody's short on every shot, and like they're not crashing the boards as hard as they were in the first half. Two games in a row, they've been the aggressor. Yeah, when it should be time for the right. Pacers bench to kick in. So they're they're, I, I, yeah. My my brain says at some point they're going to run out of gas, whether it's against the Pacers again, and and yeah, they're probably going to lose against the Celtics if they advance. But like I'm speaking more on like the energy part. Like at some point. You're going to be watching a Knicks game, and the fourth quarter is going to be a blowout because mm-hmm. it's just like those guys are dog. Well, that's tired. it's going to be the excuse. But, it's going to be yeah. They're going to get their ass kicked by the Celtics because the Celtics because, are a really good basketball yeah. team. Yeah, but it's going to be like see Tibbs. That's what happens. That's what happens when you when you don't go to your bench. That's what has what also. Happens. Have you seen their benches plus minus? It's the, abysmal. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you want them to do? They're so fun. I the only thing and um. I'm not saying this because of uh, Game One of the Pacers or anything. It's 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 how you felt about Brunson all year. Brunson is is very easy to to to, to cheer for. Uh, all the Villanova guys are. It's just I I, I wish they didn't flop. I do. Mm. I wish they didn't flop. It's but basketball. that but that's basketball, basketball now. I know it sucks because it's like not the same game you in played. In some ways, up, Mark. In some ways, the Villanova three especially. Those are the those are the guys that I lock in on. Especially being more of a college guy, it's like that's so mm-hmm. fucking yeah, cool to awesome. see those three guys playing in the NBA together. Um. In some ways, I want them to represent like what I the NBA could be, yeah. and it's like they fucking Goodness. they're not they're not load managing. They're doing the opposite. We're here they're to out play there. Ball. They're crashing the glass. Josh Hart will do whatever you ask of them. Yep. They uh, it, it, just all those all those boxes you can check, and then all three of them kind of flop. Yeah, all three of them flop, and I'm like, I get it, I get it. Every that's what you have to do. But mm-hmm. God, I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish. I wish, because they're they they would be such perfect candidates, and especially playing in New York, those three would be such perfect candidates to not flop and like change the whole everything. discourse, the whole just everything, just like like Toughness. they 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 go in press post game press conferences like you will never see us flop. Yeah. That's for pussies, dude. We're not pussies because we're New York basketball. We, we're fucking Philly for college. We're New York for for NBA. We're not like those other pussy ass bitches in this league. And like I, like I could this. see Josh Hart like going you on his get rant. In Hart's ear. Yeah, this I could see good. him this doing this. This would be a good identity. This would be like a cultural shift across the entire league. It's like you're getting your ass beat by the Knicks because you're flopping yep. pussies, and they're not. They play 48 minutes a and game. I, they don't they and don't I think flop. that's what I want from them, and they just not do it, and they're flopping. And it's like I get – I'm not that mad, but it's like you could be something. Yeah, you could have – you were the chosen one. <laughs> and it pairs so well with their crowd. How much fun is their crowd? Yeah. I saw yesterday it's like every other – like I go to Cavs games sometimes, and it's like – they have to put like the Michigan logo on the jumbotron, and everyone's like, Dude, "Boo!" boo. <laughs> it's like Ben Roethlisberger goes up there. It's like, yeah, <laughs> but no, the Knicks are just fucking going nuts. I love it. I, I do love it. I, I, part of me wants to to rag on New York, and I am from Indiana, so like I'm supposed to, you know, talking about that yeah. cultural thing earlier. I'm supposed to be the guy that's like, "No, nah, man, the Hoosiers, we we get it in a way that the new big city New York people don't get it." Um. 
I can't I can't lie. Like the the, the MSG crowd is yeah. on another MSG level. Crowd, it's so awesome. Villanova connection. The celebrities too that that uh, the Knicks fans have are like actually passionate diehard fans of the team and uh -huh. are losing their minds and are chirping at players. Not just Spike Lee. It's like Fat Joe and fucking. Chris Rock and Ben Still, like, such a great like all these, yeah. all these. I'm not, you know, like Spike is obviously on another level, but um, you contrast that with like the Lakers celebrity fans, and it's like just a lot of people that are there to be seen. Yeah, exactly, to be on camera. So it's like even even the the people that are that you would think are just kind of there to flex how rich they are and all that. Even they're like kind of going crazy. Titus, mm. you're, you're talking me into being a Knicks fan. I know. It sounds you're quite the. Knicks I think if you're, I think if here. you're a neutral fan, it you're hoping for. I guess the West, you don't really care. Um. I was gonna say you're hoping Timberwolves, but I think you want the Knicks, right? Because you know the Cavs have no shot. The Cavs, Boston. I mean Boston and Boston and the Knicks is gonna be an electric series. Yeah. I mean Boston and New York. Obviously, you have that rivalry. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think yeah. The Knicks representing the East would be. Would be awesome. Electric. That would be awesome. Then they'd get their dicks kicked in. Yeah, probably. Where's the champion coming out of? I mean, the Celtics are the favorite, no? I think the Celtics. The Celtics are. I, I can't tell if they're the favorite because they're very obviously the best team in the league, or if they're the favorite because they're just playing quite the cakewalk. Yeah, the cakewalk to this point, and um, they are they are so damn good though. I don't they even should, know when, they, when they're hitting threes. It's I don't even know if they're I don't know how playing, you stop them. I don't even know if they've scratched the surface. Yeah, like right now they kicked the shit out of the Cavs in game one. Yeah, Jalen Brown was incredible from from the jump. Obviously, White hit seven threes. K, okay. they played well. Jason Tatum didn't shoot well. Yeah. Their best player is like 7 of 20 from the field. He can be better. I think if you're arguing against the Celtics and you're saying one of the teams in the West will um, w should be favored in the finals against the Celtics, no matter who that team ends up being, is that we've kind of seen the Celtics before. You, you, there's just the small part of you that remembers the Celtics going up against the Warriors, who they mm -hmm. should have easily handled in the finals. And they kind of shrunk mentally this like is kind such a, of they've knocked on the door they've knocked on the door yeah. so like I, I you know it could go one of two ways you could be like no man they use they they've used their failures as fuel to like get over the hump and maybe that's it that ends up being what happens or you can make the argument that like we kind of know what the Celtics are they can get to here but then they're always going to get in their own way they're always going to trip over their own dicks when the when the spotlight is the brightest whereas we don't know what the Timberwolves we don't know this iteration of the, the Timberwolves thunder, yeah. we don't know what the thunder could be we, the Mavs, we kind of do know, like they, but not really, because not with Kyrie, not this iteration of the Mavs. We don't know. The only one who's been there would be the Nuggets. And the Nuggets won the title, so like we know, we do know that the Nuggets can win the title. So are, are I, the Celtics, I guess that's the argument. Are the Celtics championship or bust? Like, are you saying they get to the championship, they lose to I, one of those teams? And it's like, damn, well, the lights were too bright. I think, I think for the talking heads, yes. I think for the franchise, you understand that. You keep you keep knocking on the door; it will eventually open. And mm -hmm. I do think that this starting five that they have is so fucking good that Very you just good. have to assume that like eventually things break your way. Now, I guess context matters. If they get swept, if they play the Timberwolves and like you know Jason Tatum it looks like the way Jamal Murray looked in Game Two, where he's bringing the ball up and he looks flustered and scared right. and like then it looks like I saw right. I saw I saw a great uh, a great tweet someone had that uh jamal murray looked like a, a white guy in aau basketball playing the black kids for the first time uh, that's it that's a perfect like, oh analogy God. i set the phone down and dude i had to go i had to go walk away and sit down and just like i got all this ptsd yep like, fuck dude been there that is that is spot on dude there the, you're you're especially like being from the suburbs and you're used to playing like all yeah. these farm kids and then the first time like in and fourth grade, where they're like, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna play the we're gonna play the city kids. And you're like, oh yeah, cool, city yep. kids. We'll you play don't them. know until you know. The ball gets tipped. You're like, what the fuck? Yep. First <laughs> what time, is where, this? first time where you're coming down, bring the ball down, and they're clapping. They're cla yeah. Like, oh shit. Oh no, dude. They're not floor slappers. They're they're they're, they're clapping in dude, your face. I have I have such vivid memories of that. Yeah. We used to like I I I used to. Uh, uh, the teams that I would play, like on my school team, we we. Basically, like I would play because I was like a giant when I was little. I was like six foot tall in like fifth grade, so like yeah. I was, I w I would play against the city kids a lot and with them. But like in like the all star uh -huh. games, like I would play like really good fucking players. But then I'd go back to my school and like we were like kind of a, you know, like a, just a average ass suburb. But then every so often, like when the schools would, we would have to take our school into to play city teams and. uh Every time that would happen, I'm like the big guy on the team. This is like fifth, sixth grade. Like I'm usually like playing center. Every time that would happen, I would suddenly have to play point guard. 
<laughs> and I would hate it so much. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, I got to bring the ball up against, like, run and jump traps and oh shit. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I saw I saw that Murray clip. There, there's the one clip especially where he, he uh, he's getting, like, double teamed and trapped, and he throws it out. He's, like, yelling at the refs and the – and someone was like, "That looks like that looks yep. like white kids Spot playing black kids analogy. for the first time." And I was like, "God damn, dude, that's perfect." Um, but anyway, yeah, I think uh, going back to the Celtics part of it all, like if if Tatum looks like that, and the Celtics get swept, uh-huh. it's a different thing. And then then you're like, "All right, well, yeah, this is a fail." But I don't it's different I, than I, going seven. Than with going the seven, you lose. Yeah. yeah. Quick break to talk about our friends at DraftKings. The NBA playoffs are heating up, and so is the action of DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Teams are knocking on the door of the conference finals, and DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered every step of the way with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. Don't miss out as the NBA postseason winds down. It's super easy to get started with DraftKings. If you're a first-timer, try betting on something like a team to win. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. It is that simple. Now is a good time to do it, by the way, because people – People get carried away with the the first couple games of playoff series, and you think you you know that people forget that playoff series ebb, ebb and flow. So if you're someone that's a little more level headed, and you're saying, "Listen, I know Denver didn't look great in the first two games, but I believe in Denver in Game Three. Maybe there's some money to be made there. Maybe maybe you're, you go the other way, and you're like, I don't care what what the rest of the people think about these Denver Nuggets being defend, uh, the defending champions. I saw what I saw in Game Two. They have no shot against the Timberwolves. They are done. They are ready for vacation. Maybe you, you, you sprinkle a little bit on the Timberwolves. Either way, if you are new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TITUS. That's code TITUS for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets when you uh, you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Yeah, I don't that th- this Timberwolves Nuggets series has been crazy so far. I, I People are talking, are the Nuggets going to get swept? It's a, it's They're down 2-0 going to Minnesota. That the game two was shocking. Game one um, was surprising. Mm-hmm. Obviously, game. it's game two was game two. You're like the Nuggets are absolutely winning, and it might be a blowout because the Nuggets. Yeah, it, it's time. Home, it's time to lock in. Champs, you're not yeah. going down 0-2. Rudy Gobert's out. Yep, they're going. They're going to lock in. Obviously, and it was not, dude. The T Wolves defense is is something. They else. guard so well, and they have yeah. all the things you need, like yeah. rim protection. They got a veteran. They got. They're deep. They're long. Mm-hmm. Chemistry. The best chemistry in the league hasn't mattered at all in the first two games. Yeah. So, is that who you got coming out? You got Timberwolves. You I mean, there? right now you'd have to say that. I mean, the 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 Thunder are are great too. The Thunder are deep. The Thunder have. Are length. they too, are the they Thunder. too young, Mark? It's Where a do great you stand question. On that? Great question. Um, I don't know. I I do feel like that 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 might matter. Now the Timberwolves have the advantage of having veteran guys like Anthony Edwards is very young, but that, that you wouldn't say that team is all young guys. No, but, but, but they, they have, they play, have the right mix and they have playoff experience in Minnesota, but the thunder, like aside from, I think SGA might've been like a sixth man one time. These yeah. guys are their, this is their first, time this is their play. first. And, and they have a massive target on their back. Um, I do like their depth. I like I like the athleticism. SGA is fucking awesome. Um, even having like like I I forget until he gets in the game that Gordon Hayward's on that team. Which yeah. I'm not saying like he's a difference maker, but I'm saying that speaks to how good the whole team is. The whole good how good the whole team is. A Gordon Hayward. You're throwing Gordon Hayward in for seven minutes, and then you're just saying like yeah, just go just go give us. Well, that's minutes. what Gordon Hayward has been like. A, I know he's I know he's like a, not the player he was right. and all that, but it's just like that's the luxury you have is just. Bringing a guy like that off the bench for seven minutes. People were saying last night, and Shaq got in his feelings a little bit about. He's like, "Oh, SGA should have been the MVP. SGA is incredible. The team's really freaking good. Mm-hmm. Like, they got they got dudes on that team. Yeah. I think if you take Jokic off the off the Nuggets, like he is clearly he played without Murray twenty games this year. And yeah, what they are. So yeah, I'm sad if the Nuggets get swept because they're they've been so fun to watch, and it was so cool to see them kind of uh, rise to the. Just kind of going like a natural rise as a franchise, mm-hmm. and and kind of check off some boxes, and um and then finally win the title. And it was like not that they were going to win it every year, and, and even if they get swept this year, it doesn't mean they're they're going away. And right. like that's it, the 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 Jokic Murray era is over. But um, I don't know, they're they're fun. To, I I am very much a pro Nuggets guy in the sense that they're just like so when they're on when that offense is humming, it's so fun to watch. Uh, which speaks to how well the Timberwolves are playing because they have. I, I was shocked at how like frustrated the Nuggets. The Nuggets threw in the towel like almost immediately. They just they have them just so defense, flustered. They just made you make you bleed the shot clock, take bad shots. Yeah. It's fun to watch. I don't know if it was up to me. Nuggets Celtics would be quite the series. That would be a great series. But uh, if the Nuggets are going to get beat, I would not hate to see T Wolves Thunder just 
the the kids the kids the going kids at just it. playing games where where are you at with the anthony edwards michael jordan comparisons is this is this absolutely egregious he, or are you like i'm sort of seeing it i'm sort of well are we talking like on the court or on the 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 oh just the, the just the, the side by side the, face the, shot yeah a lot of similarities on well that. i think that's what it is i think that you see the side by side face shot you see the body movements i think that's it's really like, funny it's, it's like like i think the people that are getting carried away saying he's mj it's less like this is a guy who is going to dominate the league, and and he he I mean honestly he might he's he's he looks that good, but um it's less about like this guy is going to destroy everybody and and just have like a, a be a larger than life figure in this entire league and run the league the way MJ did, and it's more like you see the way like MJ like it, hits a turnaround a fadeaway, yeah, and, and he knows what he's doing too. He's done the air, it's like, like yeah, it's the it's the side by side comparison of just the body movements and the fluidity and the um the athleticism, all of that that I'm like Damn, yeah. If this if does. there was this if there was I don't know Jason Tatum doing all this you know dominating the league on one side, it's one thing. He's doing this, and then he looks damn near exactly he did, like yeah. the guy. That's that's so. what I mean, yeah. Because, um, yeah, like like LeBron and MJ have been compared to each other since LeBron was in high school, but um, LeBron has never for one second played basketball like Michael Jordan, in, mm-hmm. my, in my opinion, maybe for one second. Maybe there was one second he did. But, one second. But, uh, no, you, you, you don't watch, you've never watched LeBron play and be like, that. that oh, my God. I, if, I, if, I, if I squint, that looks exactly like Michael Jordan because he, he plays a different style. He's mm-hmm. a different build. He's uh, – He's just different, but he's 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 the the comparisons are like they're both great. Who's better, whatever? You do that with Anthony Edwards, I think. I think you look at him, and you're like, holy shit, dude, well, this guy moves like Michael Jordan. I think we did this show maybe four weeks ago, my first time doing it, and you were like, is is Anthony Edwards able to like carry the torch of like the next NBA player? Yeah, and we were like, no, like it, it feels too soon. A month, he's there. A month later, he's there. If oh, T the Wolves win this one. I'll, I'll do you one better. The T-Wolves win this one. We go to Paris for the Olympics, and Anthony Edwards is like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be that dude, and I'm going to like just fucking – Do the old heads over. let him do it? Is, is, That's is that- a great question. That is a fair question because Steph is playing in his first Olympics. LeBron's given the last go-round. They, need to, the they would need to give their like voice stamp of approval. Because, like you said, this is the ex- in my opinion, it's the exact same thing you said about being a guard that can score twenty in the NBA. Yeah, whoever we want to be the dude on Team USA has the ability to be the dude on Team USA. I'm pulling up the roster, by the way. Yeah, let's do. I, it. I need to reference this because this is a good this is a good discussion. Is LeBron okay with passing? Who's the torch? who's going to be the dude on Team USA? Am I wrong, or is it whoever they want it to be? It really is whoever they want. So we got we got uh, 24, 2024 national team roster. Um, wow, some good players. Like, what are they going to do with him? Because you could, t- I could tell you right now that he could be in that first five, or you could tell me that he's like player nine because Bam Adebayo, Devin Booker, Steph Curry, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Jason Tatum. Holy fuck! <laughs> All right, quick so- prediction: Who do you have winning the uh, Olympics this year? <laughs> <laughs> Getting Embiid from France was a big W yes, for us. I, I I have been someone who's loudly been fearing the um, the USA's loosening grip on mm-hmm. basketball, um, and people are like, and, and every time I say that, everyone's like, "Dude, you're crazy! Look at the look at how many you know we're still we still are by far the best." And I'm like, "I know, but that's the problem. It's the hubris. I don't want to get complacent. And at one point, you're going to look point, over." Yes, so I want to make sure we as a country keep acknowledging, like, fuck, yeah, the top three guys in the MVP, MVP yep. race this year, not American. American born, yeah. Like, I, I want to, like, keep acknowledging this. I don't think this is – I don't know. I I, I, I just fear, keep an eye on. I fear a world where, like, we are like, you know what, we're done fucking around. We're sending our best guys. We're going to beat their ass, and we still can't beat it. Like, mm-hmm. a France team that's got Victor Wimbenyama and Rudy Gobert and whatever other freakish dudes they're pumping out over there. Um. Anyway, all right, so – Bam out of bio, Devin Devin Booker's not starting. I think Steph's starting. I based think Steph, on, based on respect, based on Steve Kerr's the coach, based on this is Steph's first Olympics. Um, yeah, you, and you can't like close your eyes. You can't see Steph Curry coming off the bench. You can't really. Yeah, he's not. He's That's not the coming thing, off like, the bench. I think he'd be willing to. <coughs> I think Steph would think? be like. I think Steph would be like. I don't. I don't. He's a cool dude. I, yeah, like, I'm a cool dude. But also, I don't. I don't know if Steph Curry has it in his his bag to 
travel to the Olympics and then be yeah. the sixth man. I think no no question about it definitely starting. I think the three guys are Steph, LeBron, and uh, Durant. I think those three. And are the three biggest start, names. Yeah, I think you start with those three, and it's like I don't care if – you could amputate both of their legs, all of their legs, and I think you still have to start them just so, out of. <laughs> so, so if you're coach, I mean, if you're coaching, are you are you worried about attitudes? Are you worried about morale? Are you worried about literally filling in around those? Things? Um, yeah, I mean, at that point, I'm looking at the because you need roster. like some sort of rim protector there if you're going to. Yeah, so we have to start it. So it's probably Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. or because you're doing are you, the the big man. The so center, you're having Embiid. Are you doing are you doing bench? Embiid and Davis together? He didn't turn LeBron. down France to sit. So is it is it, yeah? Are you playing like Durant at the two and LeBron at the three and Davis at the four and and beat at the five? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what they're doing with. Uh, you almost have to go five for five, old school. Like I don't even know what. How do you tell Kawhi's you? coming off the bench? I actually could see Kawhi coming off the bench. I. I. But I, I guess this is the point: is Anthony Edwards might be coming off the bench because like maybe Kawhi's. Just based I think on it's, based on age and experience and like respect Anthony Edwards has to come off the bench. Yeah, I think so. But I, I'm I'm thinking Steph at the one and Anthony Edwards at the two. What are you doing with Tatum? That's a good point. Tatum at the three. Durant Durant at the also three. And then <laughs> Dude, I don't know what they're gonna do. Let us start six. <laughs> I don't know no, what they're us. gonna do. I it, point being Anthony my my idea of Anthony Edwards being the guy on this team might be might be far fetched just about based off of I don't I don't think LeBron and Durant are going to want to be the guy though. I think they're both comfortable. They they they've done a lot of Olympics. They've won a lot of gold medals. They they see it as like a civic duty more so than a le- legacy play. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't think that I think they will. I think they'll be awesome for the team. I think they're going to score a lot and whatever, but I don't think I don't think either one of those guys is going to be like I, I I need to be the guy on this yeah. team and lead the way. It's tough. It's easier for them to do it, though, because they've been there, done that. Like you said, if this is Steph's first one, is he cool being, like, the old vet that, like, yeah. is okay with the young kid? I think, I, think, I think for the future of USA Basketball, they should allow Anthony Edwards to be the dude. I think they should use this as, like, a time to be, like, you – you carry you, you not carry us. You they don't need nobody needs to no single person needs to carry that roster, but um yeah. I if he wins the finals, I mean it'll be tough to not keep that rolling, no? Yeah. No, that's gonna be all oh, God, I can't wait for the Olympics. I can't wait. I did you get into that? The USA uh, basketball or not a, USA not a, like, basketball, yes. Like I the, thought like, you were I, talking not like, the Olympics. I mean like this this the idea of international basketball. Yes. In, I I almost look at it as like a pride. Like like your hometown, mm. your your hometown basketball team. Like, yeah, they got a big game. Our country has a game. Yeah, today. our country's playing against, and basketball is the thing that like we have. We I, I care so much about it. Yeah. That that's that's why I think I'm nervous of a of a of a future where we're not the best. Is like because I I think we should. Everybody in this country treats basketball on an international level uh, like they're bored with it almost. Like mm-hmm. it's a it's a ho hum. Of course, if, if if USA wins the gold medal. The, the general population just goes, oh, yeah, no shit, dude. We're USA. If we lose, it's blow it up. World ending. Everybody's yeah. a fraud. Start World War Three. Yeah. And there's no in between of like, I think we should I think we should have a situation where when we win gold medals, we tell the rest of the world to suck our suck dicks. Them. Yep. We're better than you. I like that. And we have the bravado like like in the way that like Brazil would if they win a soccer World Cup. Mm-hmm. Like they they yeah they, they don't they, they don't think they're good so they just oh yeah, yeah yeah of course we won yeah, we're Brazil so. this is what they're like holy shit dude we want another one and 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 then they brag about it it should Germany be our thing to rub the rest of the world's face in yeah and I and I want to I want to have that I want us as a country to have that attitude and I think unfortunately the only way we can get there is I do think we have to now we have lost out on gold medals before but that's the problem is there's always the shrugging of the shoulders it's like. We didn't send our best guys, dude. Who cares? You know, like I mean, when we send our best, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna wipe the floor with everybody. Um, so I'm not, I'm not. Of course, I'm not rooting for us to lose, but I, you know, the objective part of me is like, I think that might be what it takes. Is like to wake everybody up. Is like to fall down a Victor Wimbanyama France team, and he's got like some buddies that I don't know about yet that are in the pipeline in, in a few years. I mean, this team would constitute they, what you're saying, though. Yeah, like this, this team, team is, gets beat. Oh yeah, it's this, it's, this is a beat. this it's, is a serious this is a serious problem. Press the, press the codes, you know. And we came we came close to it with uh, with Spain in those like in 08, and I don't I don't remember I I conflate 08 and 12 a lot. I think one of them that was closer gold medal than the other. Um, but 
you know, like we, we beat them, and I, and I, of course, I was cheering for USA, but in, and we, we didn't send our top, 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 top team. We sent like our A, A minus team. We didn't send like the fucking juggernaut team we're sending right now. Um, but yeah, that that was I I felt like that could have been something. It was like Spain's like Spain's kind of on our hit, but then Spain fell off and like all their guy all the Gasol brothers are are older and yeah. Ricky Rubio's out and Rudy Fernandez is done and What's the reason? What do you what do you think? I mean, if I could play in the Olympics, I would. Yeah. Is it is it just you just came off a long season? Yeah, I think it's paid just, much. It's, it's probably like, just man, financial, right? How cool it's would just it be like, to put a USA on your yeah, chest and, I know. and tell the rest of the world like better luck next four years? I know. I'm I'm trying to think of what the example. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like a for a barstool employee what the what the, what the like is it like, like I'm trying I'm trying to put myself in the shoes because like obviously if you ask us to play in the Olympics we're like yeah yeah, yeah of fuck, course yeah, dude. like we're, blood runs red <laughs> but we're also dipshits that are yeah. that are doing a podcast right now so I'm trying to think of what the podcast equivalent of this is like I you guess asked if me you to had like, your one week vacation from podcasting and they're like do you want to go to the podcast world world championships, championships. <laughs> yeah I'd it's represent like, you podcast against France. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, throw the USA on there. Yeah, I mean, is is LeBron doing it? <laughs> <laughs> if LeBron does it, maybe, but I don't. I kind of would rather go on vacation. Yeah. Maybe. All right, maybe we can't. Yeah, and also like uh, we're gonna pay you. I'm like I'm trying to think of the ratio of like they're making sixty million dollars a year, and now you're mm-hmm. gonna make. I don't know how much they pay him actually. Like, but I'm trying to think of what the ratio would be. Tate, we're gonna pay you like. Five bucks. <laughs> we'll give you ooh gold. Oh, that's Singapore. Sorry, <laughs> Olympic athletes are not paid. Is my first NBC quote. I'm assuming the USA basketball pays. They them. have to pay them like, something. Yeah. Um, but there's probably. I mean, as compared to their salaries, it's probably the equivalent of you going to the podcast world championships. We'll give you ten bucks. We'll yeah. give you. We'll give you maybe twenty if you win gold. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, you might you you might be like you're like where where is it and and you know this year's in Paris which probably makes it better maybe that's why the guys are signing up but you know they're like uh, it's in Russia and you're like ah fine uh, you know I think about that is this I, is reminds, like we're sitting here as like Americans being like if we could play for our country we would yeah it's like the same thing with like getting mad at like your your teams for not hating the other team yeah it's like yeah. dude we're getting paid sixty million dollars yeah. I don't give a fuck that. Uh, Sorry to say, I don't. the Browns hate the Steelers. I don't. Okay. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, so I, I'm I'm fired up for the Olympics. So, uh, before we go, I wanted to talk to you about your first pitch saga. Uh, I think you, I don't think you launched it on my show, but I did. We, did we talk about it last time? You were uh, yeah, Cody. Show? Cody brought it up because Cody's producing it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did. So, so I don't. I don't think we broke the news that you were doing it, but it was like right on the heels of you breaking the news that you were you were going on this path and uh you had not started if i if memory serves the last time we talked to you you had not um mm-hmm. you had not thrown out a first pitch you have now done how many three i actually broke the world record we checked in on it um first person uh to throw a first pitch strike at a t-ball coach pitch and kid pitch game within an eight day span wow mm-hmm. and that that is a prestigious record yep so, so there is books. there is that it's uh it's taken to a different level though um i it's it's been good. I first game I placed the ball on the tee for T ball. <laughs> and I don't know if you saw the video. They I did. Liam Blutman I announced did. me and uh not one person clapped. Oh my god. And so god. I walked out and placed the ball on the tee and second one, uh coach pitch, I got down on one knee and tossed, tossed it, it in, which yeah. was good. Um then I went to your home state. Yeah, I okay, this I'll let, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you go first, but it is my home state. But like I've been, things. I have been, I have been like bombarded since you guys went on this trip. Mm-hmm. Basically, Liam Blutman has cornered me like five different times and is like, "I want to talk to you about Indiana." And I'm like, "Blutman, I'm not from where you went, but I will, I will still play the role of Hoosier and, and, yeah. and Crown Point, Indiana." But go ahead. Well, first of all, and I'm not here to point fingers, but there were three people in the car, <laughs> and there were two people hounding how bad indiana was and i'm like this kind of looks like home well, y- y- what what uh, we went through gary you went through crown gary point. i mean what, you went through describe gary. to me what the difference is then well crown point is just like a a, a stereotypical like i loved it yeah it, that is home. That, that would be home to you crown point is like anywhere usa crown point is like you but know they you took picture the sandlot like, like you, you go i don't know you go throw a first pitch in 
we tried to get Jackie Robinson Little League, um, which would have been good. That, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you go through that pitch, they're not like packing the stands. They posted it on the league message board. Yeah, they welcomed us with five commissioners. They gave us jerseys. Hats, I don't, I don't, they, I don't understand the problem with Crown Point. Like it why, was why they would awesome. Yeah, Crown Point is just like Crown Point is like a place where they have money. They it it it's but it's not they it, it's a I would describe it as this. It's a place that has money, but if you're driving a Mercedes, you're an asshole. Yeah, you know, fair. which is like you you wouldn't say it's poor and downtrodden. You also no, it wasn't. But, but you also, also, but also, like if if you're if you're someone that lives in Crown Point and you're driving around like fancy ass cars and Range Rovers and shit, your neighbors are like, you know, look at this fucking guy. No, like, the, see, the you, money goes to the high school sports booster yeah, team to yeah, put turf on the right. field. You know, yeah, but nobody's hurting for money. No. Uh, some people might be, but you know what I'm saying? That like, yeah, they they have nice shit and. It's just like, I don't know, there's a million places like that in, mm-hmm. in the Midwest. That's why I took offense when Blutman was like, I could never Well, here. Blutman did give quite the introduction. He said in 49 states, this would just be a first pitch. Mm-hmm. But in this one, yeah. it's different. And I will I, say. I do like that. They rolled out the red carpet. And I got a question for you. You're, you've hit, I actually have a Mark Titus autograph, autograph I've told you. What's your autograph game like? Like, have you, uh, do you sign many things? Well, how do you answer that without being? You an have asshole? signed without being many an things. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I, I writing a book it makes you want to like people. It's like a natural thing. Like people want you to sign their book from mm-hmm. time now. That's been a long time since I wrote that, so I don't sign that as often. Uh, like if I yeah, asked you to bust out an auto right now, you got no. It. I still it's still for, I still sign. Someone asked for my autograph. God, this is such a douche. It's like, what yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> um, I would say it's like every. Within two weeks, every two, wow. uh, once every two weeks, I probably get asked to. Sign when are something. you? This is not a shot, but when are you signing autographs these days? What's uh, the, what's, also, what's the demographic? Uh, it's all over the place. It's like people want me to sign their books. Uh, okay. people want me to just sign. I mean, like obviously, like a I, I'm not. I do not think I'm a celebrity by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. But like the the way people treat the celebrities. <laughs> The way people got a philanthropy site on their <laughs> Wikipedia page. The way people treat celebrities has changed now with with cell phones. So people want selfies now. So like you take a lot of selfies. There's a lot of like I get a quick selfie. Like yeah, yeah. no problem with that. But then those people don't ask for autographs, which is that's you the know, modern day. That's the modern day autograph. Uh, but yeah, there I, a lot of a lot of books, a lot of uh, a lot of just like uh, uh, weird shit that they want you to sign. Um, Do you ever they turn have, them if they down? have Club Trill shirts or like it's like it's like merch type shit that I will sign. Sometimes people do just ask me to sign like a bar napkin, well, which that, is that's weird. where I don't know. So I ran into two conundrums. Well, three. One. I, don't, I don't ever ever. I don't have for the record. If anybody's, like, I don't have a problem with it. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys that's like, God, here we go. I got to deal with my. No. I love it. I, I the fact that anybody awesome. is listening to this, the fact that I have an audience of any sort whatsoever, I I, I find just staggering, and I I am very appreciative of it. But uh, yeah, I was just trying to give you. A, I, I think the difference is a couple weeks probably the people that ask you for their autograph for your autograph know who you are. Like that's why it's flattering. It's yeah. Cool. The autographs I signed in Crown Point, Indiana. Yeah. Were I'm not gonna over exaggerate. 150 kids that thought I was. Oh, mine. you were signed. You were just signing like crazy. 150. Oh my god. And it yeah, was that's and what they did. They didn't know you, you. So you think they don't know you? You. So, I don't. What? What did everyone want? The well, they could be. Loggers? They could be barstool. They could be stoolies. That I like, think they heard that I, my goal was to throw out a first pitch at a major league game, and they thought I was like. They were major. buying stock low. I got a couple. Do you play for the White Sox or the Cubs? <laughs> I said I played for the Blue Jays in Wadsworth High School or Wadsworth Rec League. Um, but no, so I ran into a couple conundrums. The first one was I didn't know whether to sign my f- name or my barstool name. Yeah. Like I'm Tate Moore. Right. Or I'm Ohio's Tate. Right. Ohio's Tate came to throw out the first pitch. Tate Moore signs his checks. Right. Um, yeah, it's tough. I don't know. That's something I, I, I can't help you with. Plus, I'm, I could. I'm one of the few people here that just goes by yeah. my first and last name. You're real. Yeah. You just get it. <laughs> no, I just, I'm just not creative enough to come up with an alternative. Well, you know, like you are. Yeah. You're, you're very creative with Thank Ohio's you. Tate. <laughs> but, uh, so, and the other thing between us was uh, I didn't know how to do a cursive O. How, now, how can that be? The, the 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 marching band at your alma mater oh, demonstrates man. that for you every fall. That's a tough look. Yeah, that's a we, good script. Point. Ohio is like is so you're going Ohio. You should have no problem with it's 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 on display. Yeah, they literally they literally show oh, you. Oh no. Yeah. Cut that. <laughs> um, well, I ended up. I hate to say this. I ended up going uh, print Ohio 
Tate. And you, did you, did you print Tate as well? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just went That's... Ohio, Tate. And so I went, the other conundrum was like, I'll sign your, your, you know, baseballs all day if that's what you want. When you give seven to 12 year olds like, oh, there's a celebrity here. You're like, hey, sign my iPhone. Sign my uh, AirPods. <laughs> what are you doing, Titus? <laughs> What are you doing if a nine-year-old says, Ohio Tate, can you sign my iPhone? That's tough. Yeah. You, you, I'm assuming you did it. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah I did. I, would, I turned a couple people down. I time. would I would ask, are you sure? I'd be yeah, like, are, I guess, like, come on. I'll what, sign, what we, yeah. So. What are, we, what are we doing here? But also, uh, maybe one day, that's that'll be a... Anytime I ever asked Evan Turner to sign something, I would, I would occasionally give gifts to loved ones of... Uh, guys on the team it wasn't just evan i would ask like everybody on the team to sign stuff for us mm -hmm. um I, w I would give out autographed basketballs of our entire roster so it wasn't like i was just singling out evan i was like evan you're gonna be in the nba someday man and i really want your autograph and only your autograph um i would i would ask the whole team to sign the ball anytime evan would sign anything for me he would print his name <laughs> On purpose, on purpose, just to fuck with just you, just to like fucking ruin the ball, <laughs> and I had no choice but to respect it. Every time he did, I was like, "You son of a bitch, you did it again." That's tough. <laughs> you did it I again. I respect the move. You got me. And then uh, I would watch him sign other people's stuff, and he's doing the signature. So anytime, you so know, if you have an if, if I've printed, you. Well, yeah. Is it worth serious? more or less? Up. Uh, it's up. Yeah. It's, it's rare. But then uh, you know, other people would say it's it's not. You compare it to his actual signature. It doesn't look like. How can I know for sure that Evan Turner signed this and you didn't just print it? And, and I don't know. Maybe that was. Did you see your boy Turner um, was in the news today? I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> kind of right. I did. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I love Evan. I love Evan for that reason. And I love. I am pro. This is this is a stance that I need to also put out there because I feel like I'm on a little bit of an island with it. Um, I am pro former player podcasts mm -hmm. very much. So I think they all should have podcasts. I think. Uh, now, I want to separate myself and say I don't always agree with what they're saying, and I do think that they say some wild-ass shit, like not just Evan, but all these dudes that, that are that – are For views, podcast. you're saying, or like that they don't actually believe it? I don't even know, but I like I'll see clips of Gilbert Arenas just saying some shit. I'll see – like Shaq is not a podcast. He's just – well, he does podcast too, and he'll say some, some out there shit. But uh, I don't agree with all of it. I don't think that like Shaq telling Jokic to his face that he shouldn't have won MVP. I think Jokic should have won MVP. But I love the idea of former players just letting it rip in media. I love that. And I think that's awesome for the sport. And there does seem to be a contingent of like NBA fans that are like, shut these old asses up, dude. Shut the shut the fuck up, Shaq. Shut up, dude. Um and I sort of get that because he, he he does say some stupid stuff, but like I think it's awesome. I think it's hilarious and uh What's your uh, and, and I love that Evan just will chirp at anybody about anything. No, I like it. I think I think the player podcasts are more entertaining because they've been through it. They they have yeah. like a leg to stand on. What's your thoughts on not talking to people unless they subscribe to your podcast? <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I operate. That's how <laughs> You should start you know, running that system. Dude, I should do that with the Mark Titus show so I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> Well, if you don't subscribe to the Titus show, I'm not talking to you, and that's my get out of jail free card. Put your to like, in and keep going. I'm like, hell yeah, dude! They're like he, he, you know, I used to think that he was kind of off putting, um, and just kind of standoffish, and just mm -hmm. like he was a recluse. Now I get it that he just simply only talks to the the select few people that subscribe. To I want I want you to answer your phone call uh, to the Purdue <laughs> Day of Giving next time with that. Yeah, say, is this Mr. Titus? Do you subscribe to my you podcast? Subscribe to my podcast. Yeah, and hang up on the kid when he yeah find someone who does when he doesn't um yeah that's funny that was I, I i didn't have a problem with pat pep doing that by the way i thought that was funny that was funny and i think and he does it i think if 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 pat bev if they had won that game now i guess the counter argument is like you, you can't just remove all the the lead up to that moment um that's not how it works but i'm it yes it does because i'm saying it works that way if if he had won the game and had like a good game or just had like a few charismatic moments in the game mm -hmm. where he he gets a big stop and the fans are boo boo there's there's a bad he takes a charge yep. it's a bad call the fans are booing and he's like leaning into it mm -hmm. and it's like fun and everyone on the internet's like damn what a Pat Bev yeah we love him yeah yeah what a what a dog he is oh, that, that, yeah um and then he says that in the post game press conference I think everybody loves yeah. it I think everyone's it's, like because it was objectively funny yeah on its own isolated but. The problem, and I think this is where he screwed up. Um, the problem is he rocketed a fucking ball at a woman's face right before. <laughs> he asked for the ball back. 
<laughs> that part made me laugh too. In what I I need a listen. You can't take. I love Pat Bev. Can't necessarily take his side on on the ball. Yeah. But also, I can't take the fan side that threw the ball right back to him. Yeah. Like, Pat, oh, you dropped this, yeah, Pat. <laughs> yeah, that is true. At, at that point, you are. I, I think if you're the fan throwing it back to him, you you're asking for it. You've huh? removed all. Yeah. 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 You can't. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know what he's capable of. You just saw it. You, and also by <laughs> you just felt it. Yeah, by tossing the him the ball, team. you are you are saying I am fine with whatever happens now. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a liability. No, I love Pat Biff too. We had a we had a beef there for a little bit. Um, I don't re- remember what it was. I think it was. What'd you do? It was based off uh, New York, Chicago. That's right. Oh, basketball. I heard that. Yeah, it was. Uh, there were I a don't... lot. Of, yeah, there were a lot of people chirping saying that um, I would score easily on Pat Bev, and I was like, I, you know, I don't think it would be easy, but yeah, I would score on him. I do have sure. a question. I mean, I, I think I would, but it's like I don't, I don't think it would be easy. Who made more free throws in the um, free throw challenge? Damn. I Damn genuinely do it, not know. Damn, when you put it that way. Um, I feel like once you Pat, go, Pat Bev won the, but that is true. I, I hit more than him in the three point or in the free throw challenge, but then in the Chili's three for me, uh, three point competition, he got the better of me in that, didn't he? I didn't realize that because I thought no, he actually didn't participate, so that's not that's not a fair thing. <laughs> yeah, like, he also yeah, wasn't. He uh, also, wasn't, he also wasn't all state in Indiana back. Yeah, then. yeah. How many points did he score for Brownsburg High School? <laughs> He's not uh, even on the top ten list. Uh. No, that that was a fun that was a fun but also confusing time in my life here at Barstool when uh, I was beefing with Pat Bev. I'd never met him. First time I ever I ever talked to Pat Bev face to face, uh, it was over a, a a FaceTime call in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. I'm out to dinner with Roan and Pat Bev FaceTimes him, and then Roan's like, "I got a guy for you," and he just turns it on me and he and Pat Bev just immediately is like, "You really?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that what smoothed always, it over though? Like, always, yeah, of once course. you meet someone, it's like. Oh, we started talking shit. I'm at dinner, just screaming into the phone. I'm like, I would give you so much butt, dude. I would pump fake your ass into oblivion. <laughs> you would not be ready for my. Sp- <laughs> and he's like, he's like, Clint. <coughs> he, he got down in a defensive stance on <laughs> on FaceTime. <laughs> FaceTime. <he's> like, <laughs> Set it up. It was so funny. Um. So yeah, that beef's over. But uh. So yeah, I I, I like Pat Bev a lot, but he shouldn't have thrown the ball and smoked a woman. That's in the a face. fair take. I would say that. You should not have Four been. games. It's not funny, and it's uh, it's very dangerous. Should not have done that. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Um, anything else before we go? Uh, Suns just fired their head coach. Vogel got fired. Oh, wow. Yep. <sighs> Darvin Ham fired. That's uh, Vogel was there for one year. Was it exactly one year? That's crazy, man. That's that that's crazy. the part that like. I was, the the Vogel wasn't a good fit. He wasn't, them. yeah. But it's I, a weird hire. But but it also, also not his fault. It sort of made sense at the time to me, insofar as like the, the offense you knew was going to be fine. So you're like, let's bring in a guy who can okay. add some defense because it's like the roster is like the the when I mean, you have Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and, and Kevin Durant, yeah, yeah. we don't need to even. What do I need to scheme up? Just yeah, like, you're going to go get buckets. We could coach that, yeah, yeah, go get some buckets. Uh, so let's bring in a guy who can maybe scheme up some defense, but. I think Frank Vogel was trying to scheme up some defense, and these dudes are like, what the well, fuck are you doing? That's my thing. It's Frank Vogel's <laughs> proven he can scheme up defense. Yeah. So it's almost like an indictment on the dudes who are not willing oh, yeah. to do. So the, instead of saying, we need to play defense as a team, we need to try harder, let's just fire the guy that's trying to get us to do so. I think I think, I think think this is good for Frank Vogel. I assume he gets another job, obviously. But like the, the, the reports when they came out, the Suns get bounced from the playoffs. Immediately, Shams pushes – published on his on his articles about the Suns um and there was one that was like earlier in the year the Clippers just put it on him and there was a report that Frank Vogel was like screaming in the locker room after the game at the players and you could hear uh apparently you could hear people walking by the locker room could like just hear him screaming through the doors Mm -hmm. um and the the story that Sham said was that the players like there was zero buy-in and the players were like laughing internally they're rolling their eyes hang it up after that and and they, he puts the story out, and I think the reason he put it out is that the the Suns players and the agents of the players were like, we want to show how big of a clown Frank mm-hmm. Vogel is. I read it, and I was like, the whole roster yeah. is clowns. Fuck them. For- <laughs> what yeah. the hell, dude? You get your ass kicked, and your coach is yelling at you. Mm-hmm. You don't laugh. Like I don't, I don't. But that's that's the NBA now. That's that's like not. But that's not every player. I mean, but that's I do hate that about that. Like that that makes it hard for me. It's like when 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 coach killers come around. Yeah. Are you on? Are you on JJ Redick being a head coach? Um, subscribe to that. 
it's hard to say. I I think he'd be a, I think he'd be a decent coach. He does have the reason. I I think JJ wants to be a coach. I do think that that's the reason he like refuses to say anything bad about any player. Um, and he he will go to bat for every player on his podcast and everything else. Um, because I think he's trying to like be a player's coach eventually. Mm-hmm. I think I'm I'm pro him getting a shot. Um. It does feel weird if, like, the Lakers hired J.J. Redick when he's had zero coaching experience. I think he's a bright guy. I think he, he knows the game. I think he's he obviously is, uh, you know, is, is is a player's coach type guy, like where he'll, he'll have great relationships with the players and all that sort of shit. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm him if I would – I don't know why he would want to do that, though, because he is sort of positioning himself as, like, the guy in media, yeah. in NBA media. Does the Mark so, like, Tice show would... move up the ladder on podcasts if he has to – that's a good point. Yeah, I don't hate that. So yeah, let's let's get him out. Get him a job. Let's get him. Boom. Let's get let's get all of the competition jobs one by one. Just get everybody hired. <laughs> or can can you do a head coach podcast? I mean, I've I try I offered to do it for Chicago I State. Yeah, I was going to keep the podcast going. I was like, that's saying. free publicity, dude. If you hire me at Chicago State, I will podcast. Now, a lot has changed since then. When I went to run at that Chicago State job, I was willing to I was willing to take the job for like fifty grand a year. What's your number now? Uh, I would say like 400, 500. <laughs> I still think you're, I still think you're messing up by not reaching out to Holt the, and getting on DePaul. Get staff. it on DePaul staff. Director. No, of- I would take this. I would do Chicago state for, I think I would do it for a year for a hundred. Don't uh, tell Chicago state that they I, might dude, say. Dude, I would do it. I I think, I think, uh, you think I, you could get dudes? No. <laughs> That's <all. laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't. I don't know how good. I, I. I would not be good at all. I think I would be. I would be a good vibes guy. I would be. I do know the game better than I get credit for. Not that I give a fuck if anybody gives me any credit whatsoever for knowing the game. But of course, I'm not a moron. I just like. I. I, I find it more fun to talk about bullshit than to. Yeah. Than to break down X's and O's. Um. So yeah, I think I could. I think I could like kind of. Scheme a little bit, but not. Not on a. I don't know, like you know, like all, but all the coaches I'm going against are gonna be way be better same. at that than I. Am. I think you'd be a very good um, basketball coach. I can't see you like in the corner of the gym on Saturday morning, like yeah. watching dudes being like, no. oh, "Come play for my team." No, I couldn't. I wouldn't want to recruit. I wouldn't. I would be bad at a lot of it. But there would be like two aspects I'd be very good at, and one would be media. I would be good at media. I would win Elite. every press conference. Yeah. Every press conference I get hired, I would win everything. I would promise a lot of shit that I know full well I would not deliver on. Um. I would have this podcast. I would be like, I would basically be a very, 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 very light version of Dion. Like, <laughs> I like, like that. the diet, the diet times twelve version of Dion Sanders at Colorado is what I'd be at Chicago State, where it's like I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just kind of the roster turnover is crazy. Um, I'm saying some wild shit, but the eyeballs are on the program. And I like you can't that. deny that I am. I am driving some eyeballs. I actually program. want you to be like Dion times ten. Like yeah. kick someone out of practice, <laughs> cancel practice, gotta release a pod. <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, practice is canceled. Uh, <laughs> DraftKings has is actually asking. Uh, they actually bought ad space on three shows this week. Sales thought I was only doing two. I'm actually doing three. So now uh, practice canceled, guys. I got to do a podcast. We're off on Thursdays. <laughs> We're off on Thursdays now. I got to. I got to do a podcast. Um, no, I, I would do it for. Yeah, I, I got to go back and revisit what I said I would do the original thing for because I I promised. I, I originally promised an NCAA tournament berth. Uh, in year one. In year one. In year one. Um, I donated. No, what I I I, I this is what it, this is what the thing was. I was going to ask for a hundred thousand dollars salary. I was going to take fifty thousand dollars of that and donate it to local charities. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at, dude? <laughs> I'm a fucking philanthropist. Yeah, I know. I've That's seen what your Wikipedia I do. Page. That's what I do. Uh, so I was. That's a win. That was kind of a genius move, though, if I may say so. That I was like. Listen, if you don't hire me, you're it's not yeah, me. It's you're the turning kids. down. It's the kids. It's like the local that. kids you're turning down. I I don't know, dude. I was a dumbass. I still am. I'm just older now. Um <laughs> Let's get out of here. That's the that's the show. Thanks, Tate, for uh for for sitting in. I'll have to do this more often. This is this is fun. I'm enjoying this. I, the, I, I gotta be honest, like I would have you on more often, but your name is Tate and it's weird for me. Yeah, if we if we did that, we would have to I don't even know. It's weird for me. So um I don't know. I gotta. I gotta get over that. But uh, I, en- I enjoy you coming on the show every time you do. It's just uh, uh, get a new name or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll work on that. Or get a new face too while you're at it because you do kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't like that either. We 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 were comparing notes before the show. We, how you get the Nick Wright comparisons too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. It, he went on that Pat Bev tirade, and I got a lot of 
Yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't like that comparison. I get a lot of, uh, you look like this guy. That's It feels like half of my Twitter mentions are like. Oh. Never good looking though. Right. Uh, sometimes Sam Hartman, that was big for me. Sam okay. Hartman this year at Notre Dame, I would get a lot of Sam that, Hartman, and, and that I was is like, a good one. Yeah. "Yeah." And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" You actually dude. look exactly like him. Fuck. I was so, I was in on that. I was like, "Dude, Sam Hartman's a handsome guy, yeah. so I'll take that one." But uh, I get a lot of you look like this guy, and it's basically just like any white guy with some yeah. facial hair or whatever. Um, the only one that I stop and I just go, God, and I and I really have to think. I set the phone down. I really think about it. Mm -hmm. Is I sometimes do get Nick Wright, and I go, and I like Nick Wright a lot. I know Nick Nick Wright's listen awesome. to him, yeah, yeah. I, I beaten by the ugly stick though. But Nick Wright, and he'll tell you that. He'll tell yeah. you that that God did him no favors. I don't think you look like Nick Wright. Thanks, man. I don't think you look like Nick Wright either. You let me down though. Do you know that? What happened, dude? I just moved here to Chicago. My hair's been getting long. I said, Titus, you got nice long hair. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your hair cut? Yeah. Who do you go to? Yeah. You're like, nobody. That path is for your steps alone, man. You got to find your own. I can't be I can't be sharing these secrets. Schedule to flight. Yeah, you don't want me to look good. Well, you, you, want my, you want my skincare routine, too? You want my? You want all of it? You no, I booked a flight back to Columbus. I'm going back to my, my girl, Willow. Did you really? You booked a flight to get I have a wedding coming up in two weeks, and I, I, said, I said I'm either going to ask Titus or I'm going to schedule an appointment with Willow. No, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where I get my hair cut, but um, I need something in return. <laughs> No, I I get it. I I, I, no, I don't know. No, I'm weird about it. Nikki Clicky wanted Terrain. He wanted. Wait, you withheld from me? You actually had an answer? I'm, That's I, so fucked. Dude, no, hold on. First of all, I haven't got a haircut in months. I've been growing <laughs> it out, so like I've, yeah. I haven't got my haircut in months. Secondly, like the reason I withheld is because I'm insecure about it, not because I'm trying to protect it, but it's like, dude, it's not that special. It's like a little place around the corner from where I used to live. Like the lady does, I think she does a decent job. If but, I like, went in and said, "Give me what Titus gets," give me the Titus cut. I mean, we. Um, yeah, I did, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> no, Terrani, Terrani asked the same, and and now I just feel weird about it. I don't like, I don't like being the, I don't like being a recommendation guy. I, I really, I, I get weirded out about that in general because it's just a lot of pressure on me. You, mm -hmm. you go there, you get your haircut, you don't like it. It's yeah, like it's now weird. I have to. Now you're like, I can't believe Titus sent me here, and it's like I never sent you there. I never said go there. You just asked me where I get my haircut. I said this is where I get it cut. Fair I enough. never. And that happens to me a lot, too. It's like, Titus, I'm going to Indianapolis. Where should I eat? And I'm like, I don't know what you like. I don't know what your background is. I don't know how your mother raised you. Like, there's, there's too many questions. And they're like, all I ask is where to get lunch. And I know I'm, I know yeah. you, that's all you ask. But now I'm, in, I'm having, like, a crisis because you asked me where to grab a beer in downtown Indianapolis. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what your budget is for a beer. I'm, so, I'm sorry that I put you through. Ah! I'll just ask I'll just ask. Blood. That's Bloodman. He'll know. He knows Indiana well. Um, all right, we'll do this again soon, Tate. Thanks for doing this. Uh, good luck to the cast tonight. Hope you don't lose by a thousand. Um, thanks to everybody listening. We'll be back next uh, next Friday. See you guys.